Okay. So, hello. Thank you for everyone for attending. This, I'm, my name is Piotr Żarowski. Uh, I'm uh, with uh, Matthias and uh, Scott, who is not here, are maintaining uh, Python defaults package, which is responsive, responsible for a list of uh, the main uh, purpose of this package is to list the uh, um, Python versions that, that we currently support. And I'm responsible for helpers uh, we use in Debian to package Python stuff. And uh, this is above, so it's uh, about discussion uh, uh, various uh, uh, Python rela related uh, things. I prepared some on the Gobi. You can join it, edit it. That would be great if you can add uh, comments or uh, or uh, notes from what we talked uh, here, but uh, we can talk about uh, anything uh, Debian and Python uh, related. So it's just a proposal, but uh, please feel free to, to ask any questions you have in mind. So the, the first topic is actually answered yesterday by release team. Uh, they, uh, on the slides, put uh, Python 3.5 only as uh, supported Python 3 versions. So I guess we don't have to talk about it uh, unless you really want to support Python 3, but uh, 3.6, uh, but uh, I actually, think that uh, supporting only Python 3.5 is a good idea. Uh, not only because uh, by, uh, as Scott I think mentioned, uh, by supporting two, two versions we will increase the size of our packages quite a lot, but uh, also um, final version of Python 3.6 will be released really late and I'm not that convinced we will be able to to um, update all our packages into a state that uh, we will be uh, happy with in uh, in the stable release. So we can. Uh, how many Debian Python modules packaging uh, team members are here? Can you raise your hand and? So, so just a few, so we probably should skip the mm, second topic because it's really uh, re mm, team specific uh, and move to another one. Uh, one that uh, I already mentioned last year and uh, we still did, didn't, uh, mm, mm, we still are not there. Uh, is uh, Python free depend Python free package uh, depending on DH Python. Python free is a package that uh, mm, depends on currently um, uh, default Python free version. So right now it depends on Python 3.5, uh, and uh, it's a special package that uh, that. Uh, allows user to install always the latest version of Python. So you don't have to know which Python 3 version is currently the default, you just install Python 3. And this package used to have some helper tools that were used during, for example, package build, another package that uh, supported Python 3 uh, had to uh, list, uh, at least Python 3 uh, to get uh, DH Python 3 helper, for example. And uh, right now, uh, all these helpers were moved to another source package called DH Python. Uh, and this new package contains all the tools, DH Python 2, DH Python 3, DH PyPy, so, and few other 
uh, tools that are used during build. build. And uh, because uh, they were uh, shipped in Python 3, we had to add uh, DHPython uh, dependency uh, uh, in uh, Python 3 package uh, until all these uh, packages uh, still need it, uh, until they add uh, DHPython to build depends. And uh, I just checked, there are over 1,000 uh, packages that still don't do it. So in case of Python 3, it's not that a big deal because well, we uh, still, if somebody installs Python 3, DHPython is installed as well. And it, it's not that big, it's just a few hundred kilobytes. So it's not a big deal. But uh, in case of Python 2, uh, it, uh, it's a kind of different story because uh, uh, there are we couldn't do that. Uh, the, we couldn't do the same trick to, to just uh, uh, inst depend on different package because uh, uh, Python. Uh, we cannot depend on Python three on in Python two uh, interpreters. If user wants to install interpreter in version two, uh, we would have to force him to install my Python 3 as well, and we don't want to do that. So uh, the, the, mm, this problem is uh, uh, kind of important uh, because uh, in Python uh, 2, we still had to ship the, the older version on, of DH Python uh, 2 helper. Uh, so the, the fix for that is really uh, simple. All packages that build depend on uh, use during uh, build in one of these tools have to build depend on DHPython, but they still um, do not do. And uh, my question is, what uh, can we do to improve this situation? I uh, prepared a patch for Lintian that detects that, but. Uh, the first version of that patch was a bit uh, stripped before uh, applied by Lintian maintainers, so I created another one. Uh, it's still unfortunately not applied, uh, and uh, that's why Lintian still doesn't warn about uh, most of these cases. Uh, <coughs> But the question is, uh, can we do something about it? I mean, not, not only the, the Lintian thing will be fixed really soon, I guess, but uh, uh, what can we do to encourage maintainers to, to add new uh, dependency to, um, in Debian control file? Or can we do some kind of uh, mass back squashing party or like we did with Python support, or and what are your ideas? Because this is a buff, and I, I have problems, and I want you to help me fix them. Or maybe we can talk about something completely else. It's a buff. Sorry? Port your scripts to Python 3. Port everything to Python 3? Yeah, that's, mm, that's a goal, yes. But uh, I think even, even, actually, that's something I should talk about because during uh, this dev conf, the most question I had was uh, how long will we support Python 2? And my answer to that is, uh, we will. We have no plans to, and I think Matthias will agree with me. Can can you take my mic?
<laughs> so the, the, the idea is that um, 2020 is, I think, um, three years after the stretch release. And um, if you want to have a long-term support release of stretch, um, we won't get, well, that much uh, more upstream support for Python 2. Okay, there always will be somebody who uh, will update that, but uh, Python upstream made it very clear that they want to move to Python 3 now. And um, maybe it's a bit ambitious to, to drop Python 2 for stretch, but um, it's good enough, uh, Python 3 is good enough to, um, so that, that we can, well, convert all our small scripts and things which we use in packaging or in, in small packages um, to move to Python 3. And, and that should start now and we shouldn't delay that until after stretch. So the, all the Debian infrastructure will, if not in stretch, it's probably too late for stretch, but uh, in stretch plus in Buster, uh, will use Python 3. But it doesn't mean we will remove Python 2.7 from, from Debian. It will remain there because uh, there are lots of companies that still use it. So even if we internally in Debian don't use it, and, and every even if every package uh, I mean, every application doesn't is ported to Python 3. We will still uh, not remove Python 2.7 for for at least Buster uh, and probably Buster plus one. Who is volunteering to do the backporting to Python 2.7 for all the security fixes? Upstream will not fix it. Uh, we'll stop fixing it in four years and we'll, we will probably not have manpower to, to do, uh, do it ourselves. So. That might just be a question for the LTS team as well. I mean, it's, they might want to say, starting from release date plus two years, no Python 2 thing will be support, security supported. And if they do a public announcement about that, if you still want to run Python 2.7 to two ish on stretch, then it's you're on your own. Another solution would be probably to support only in the interpreter and remove all the libraries. Of Does it make sense? Uh, Honestly, I I don't think we we can do that now. Um, there are still some big applications which are not yet ported to Python 3. Um, so one big user is OpenStack. They, they are preparing for Python 3, but I'm not sure they will be ready for um, the next release. Another one is uh, Samba. There's some work done uh, porting the bindings, but Samba itself is not yet ported to Python 3 and uh, upstream doesn't want to support both two and three at the same time. Um, there are some net uh, applications for the desktop which are not yet ported, but um, I mean, it, it's a good goal for Buster, but I think it's too late for, for, for Stretch. In my personal opinion, even in Buster, we will have Python 2. So, but I still encourage everyone to to port to Python 3. So, on the other hand, for Buster, why? I mean, we could also say we remove Python 2.7 at the release date from testing, and then the ecosystem will follow. We are also, I mean, we are also leading. I, I'm sure we everything in Debian for Buster can use Python 3 only, but there are companies that. Uh, uh, have uh, very large uh, applications uh, and infrastructure that they simply don't have manpower right now or will to, to port to Python 3. And uh, uh, 
they probably would be fine even with the interpreter that simply compiles in Debian Buster or Buster plus one, uh, even if they don't have security support. So. so it's not that easy to remove it just from testing because then we have to change all the packaging, not to build Python 2 modules anymore. And um, I'd rather support this than, well, going to each package and, and uh, try to remove it. So um, I might uh, say that in Ubuntu, we, we are currently, um, well, moving out our build dependencies out of main into universe. So the non-supported Ubuntu section. And um, what I'm trying to do there is um, to, to get rid um, of Python 2 in, in main. So that we say we still need it for, to build stuff, but we don't rely on, on running stuff. And that might be a sign to say, well, now we can run stuff with Python 3. And I tend to, do, to use uh, that um, to make a proposal for Debian um, when we can well, when, when we can consider dropping Python 2. Uh, would it be feasible to use a different um, Python 2 implementation like PyPy, which I'm sure will be continued or continue to be supported past 2020? PyPy can't currently share a package, um, a module path with CPython because the PyC files are different. In Python 3, that is less of a problem. In Python 2, it's a big problem. So for Python 2, we are currently adding uh, PyPy full binary packages, and that's a lot of work to add to all. We can try to figure out something that will use, I mean, to use the existing Python full packages, not PyPy packages, but uh, I assume it will be a lot of work as well. Well, as an alternative migration path, um, if Python, C Python 2 is end of life, and you can't port everything to Python 3. Um, switching to PyPy 2 um, gives you a way to still run your PyPy or Python 2 point whatever code without having to rewrite a lot of it. Just as a potential idea. I'm Siko, I have a mic for you. Yeah, that doesn't work because PyPy at some point will move to Python 3 or uh, sooner or later and they are already working on it. There's already patches available for it. So it's uh, it may work short time, long time, it doesn't work. Something about PyPy. Um, where are we? Um, yes, I assume PyPy is going to be, continue to be maintained for quite a long time still. If nothing else, then because PyPy, then PyPy 3 is written in Python 2. And I don't see that changing anytime soon. Um, PyPy 3 isn't really particularly useful for Debian yet because it doesn't support 3.4 yet. And, well, it doesn't, yeah, lots of the Debian packages that support Python 3 require newer versions of Python 3 than PyPy itself is. We can package it. We cannot uh, use the main uh, advantage of PyPy 3, so yeah. which is uh, sharing these packages because these packages uh, can contain code that uh, yeah. requires Python 3.5 or later. That's why I haven't bothered with PyPy 3 recently. I've got a half done the thing on my laptop somewhere that is almost there, but I don't really see the point of it yet. So uh, 
I'd be very much if after freeze is, after stretch is released, we start to aggressively remove Python 2 libraries when they don't have dependencies. What's your guys' view on that? When when packages switch slowly move to Python 3, and we can remove Python modules support for Python 2, I think we should start that work just after freeze is, uh, stretch is released. Uh, we already encourage maintainers yeah. to, if a uh, given source package uh, supports both, then to create, at least for new packages, uh, to create at only Python 3 version of uh, the package, but and to add uh, Python 2 support only if uh, if it's really needed, so if uh, some kind of application needs that as a dependency or other library needs that, but that's our recommendation for new packages. Yes. And, for and, and shall we do it uh, proactively on already existing packages, I remove say, them from stretch? I would say yes, but you have to start After from stretch. the bottom so that uh, you don't have any dependencies. So what we probably could do is um, identify all Python modules uh, which are not available in the Python 3 version, check if they are portable, and if they are not portable, um, well, just drop them now, and that will get rid of some, um, how the, are they called, uh, Python glib, Python GDK2 stuff, and possible dependencies of that. Some of that stuff is really useful to our users, though, probably. Because it's really hard to build from so yourself. You can't just stick it in a virtual env and run setup.py install. Well, well port, port it to Python 3. <laughs> I, I mean, how, how many packages are these? It's not, it's not just Applications, yes. It's, it's people's personal scripts as well. And that's, the, that's, that's the harder part. It's actually trying. Is, <sighs> Isn't there some way of actually getting Python uh, 2 to sort of put out warnings or even uh, something when you're actually running the application saying this thing really needs to be upgraded? So um, the Fedora guys uh, had a, well, big database uh, made um, for packages which still use Python 2. Um, and then, yeah, uh, they are showing their progress, how they are converting to Python 3. So maybe it's time for somebody uh, to, to do that for Debian as well. Um, and uh, maybe we should disallow uh, uploading new packages uh, on new, new Python modules, which uh, package for Python 2 only, um, or even new applications. Um, so we don't uh, accumulate more stuff to port. Yeah, but unless, until somebody um, is doing such an analysis, um, how many packages need porting, I think we, we are still speculating. But about uh, removing Python 2, uh, binary packages I would not do, I just want to add that I would not remove them uh, in stretch and start uh, doing that uh, uh, in buster uh, and not not sooner so that we can maybe we can add uh, something to the release note uh, of stretch that uh, uh, if you are uh, using Python, please note that it's uh, a last uh, version of Python where we fully support Python 2 and we will start beginning to remove libraries or something like that so that users are aware that they <coughs> should port to Python 3. Well, or, or we could ask FTP master um, not to accept new packages. Um, yeah, but I mean about users who don't know about packages and they just need libraries. So we need to communicate that uh, to them that uh, we are starting to 
fade out uh, Python 2, and they should uh, do that as well. So companies, users, and so on. So maybe a, a note in uh, stretch uh, release notes would be a good <coughs> idea. If, um, if, if you guys are going to remove the Python 2 binary packages, is there a point to, in keeping the interpreter around? We will definitely not remove all of them in Buster, for example, so <laughs> interpreter will have to stay. <laughs> and in Buster plus one, I don't know, we can, we can uh, check if the PyPy idea is, uh, is good enough, so if PyPy is good enough to replace CPython. Or maybe it will be better to, to ship um, even without security support Python 2 for, for now. But it's a buster plus one or plus two. I think it's, problem, fairly, so. it's fairly safe to assume that there's going to be security support available for a CPython from somewhere because all this Python 2.x code is not going to suddenly die in three years' time. It's going to be around for decades. Let's hope it's only one day. Yeah, we can hope. <laughs> Another thing I listed, unless somebody has questions. Another thing I listed is uh, a problem that uh, I'm aware of, uh, and but so far nobody really needed that. Uh, in uh, Python 3, uh, there's currently no way, I mean for helpers and in the interpreter itself as well, no way to specify minimum uh, required Python free version. So if there's a library that uh, uh, requires Python 3.6 and we have uh, 3.5 and 3.6 as supported, which is not the case now and will not be in stretch, but uh, maybe in Buster, uh, there's no way to, to describe uh, mm, and in Python 3, uh, libraries share, I mean packages share the same this packages directory. Uh, and there were some ideas upstream how to solve that uh, with subdirectories or uh, headers in uh, files, but uh, it's not fixed upstream, so I didn't try to, uh, to to solve it in any way in helpers as well, hoping that uh, upstream will, will fix it. And right now we um, uh, support only one Python 3 version, so it's not an issue. But uh, maybe you have some ideas uh, how we can prepare for future. But I guess it's more question to upstream and, and uh, we have X Python 3 version don't we for our source packages yes and uh, it tells uh, our helpers uh, which interpreter versions use to build a package but once they use build Played in the binary right installed uh, and for example if user has uh, Python 3.6 installed even now even though we don't support it, uh, things can break. Uh, for example, uh, if user installs uh, something locally, uh, all the tools that uh, are used during upgrades will try to byte compile this, these files uh, for, uh, for Python 3.5 as well. And if given file requires Python 3.6, it will fail. We will have the same problem with um, PyPy3 sharing those directories as well. Yeah. 
And we decided to ignore that one for now because we haven't seen it actually be an issue yet because Pi Pi 3 doesn't exist yet. Well, in Debian. But it's possible even now that users install it and we, we are not prepared for that. Discussion happens on Gabi. Yes. <laughs> Should I read it or? Then remove the software. Maybe one point related to transition, it might be obvious, but I think one thing that really helps for these type of things that are other, otherwise never ending is having metrics and making sure we actually measure how big the problem is and how much work is left until we can actually remove. We might do that through Linton, which has now measuring purposes so we can have graphs for that measures across the whole archive you dependencies and stuff. Python 2 removal or? Yeah. AKA don't work in the vo in the void. Just make sure you have a graph that says you're done or you're not done. You're never done. Don't be silly. <laughs> Does anybody have uh, any um, problems with uh, the helper tools I wrote? Is there something I can automate? Did you have, have to override DH auto install or build or something? I didn't have to. And I think the usual problems are people struggle to find documentation on it. Uh, yeah, I know I suck at it, <laughs> but uh, I try to, <laughs> to answer uh, every question I, I get. I trans try to uh, reflect that uh, in the wiki or, or in man, man page. Uh, but uh, if anybody uh, wants to um, help me writing some documentation. I'm more than happy to answer any questions. If, uh, I'm more than happy to answer any questions even if you don't want to write documentation. <laughs> and I think I, I did answer at least on IRC. I try to answer at least. But uh, I know that I'm not a great uh, documentation writer, so uh, th that's something a newcomer uh, could uh, probably do because uh, it's uh, it, the best way probably to write documentation is to write it when you don't know something and you have to dig it for answers and I'm more than happy to, to provide answers as long as I know them. Uh, and then somebody has to uh, could at least uh, write it down in a way that uh, everybody else can understand it and not in the way I write it. <laughs> there are um, probably too many wiki pages already and sometimes it's a problem we have uh, our documentation is there, but is uh, in a different places, and it's maybe not easy to find. Uh, I try to keep uh, PyBuild, for example, examples only on the uh, wiki page that is uh, mentioned in PyBuild uh, man page. So 
it's all linked, uh, but uh, I don't know. I st still keep uh, hearing complaints about documentation, but uh, uh, I, I would like to hear more about uh, specific what 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 is missing. What do you want me to add? And I, I will. I can add that documentation myself, but I need to know what uh, what is missing. There's a question. Hey, uh, on the um, <clears throat> documentation, <clears throat> it's less that I don't necessarily know how to do something. It will be, I think I'm doing it, it works, but I think it's pretty ugly. And I think, I'm not sure what the solution would be, but if you perhaps document some best practices, or I feel like I'm hard coding a bunch of stuff, and yeah, it works, but... Um, so if you have to do it, then I probably uh, did something wrong in the tools because they should automate everything. And uh, if you have, have to uh, hard code things and so on, please contact me and uh, I, I will try to figure out if, uh, if I can help you somehow uh, by showing uh, uh, how you can uh, automate this or by improving tools to, to automate that. So Right, okay. What would be the best um, approach for that? Because they're typically not bugs, because I can't really file a bug saying, I think my packaging is ugly, <laughs> and assign it to DHPy. Do you see what I mean? It's a bit... Ping me or yeah. on IRC and point me to, to Debian rules um, file, and we will talk about it. Okay. For me, those problems are usually around tests. It's just some packages are really hard to test with PyBuilds. You've... <laughs> The test suite Are that requires test because tests it, do not run or do they fail. Because the test suite is rubbish and it requires you to be in a particular directory and have a totally insane import. Yes. Yes, so I, I added quite a few hacks like uh, changing the directory to the build directory, copying uh, test files over there, and so on. And there are probably more uh, needed, but. Uh, I need to know about yeah. them because uh, for packages that I maintain, I I had to add hacks like that, and I uh, I add them via improving tools. So uh, I knew about uh, these hacks, and I added support for them. But I need to know what else is missing. What uh, yeah. what things you need, uh, and uh, uh, you can report bugs or uh, or just ping me and show me what you needed to to, to run these tests and uh, uh, we can find a, a way to to automate that so that you don't have to do it anymore and then ideally get to a point where we can run automate auto pkg tests from them as well uh, but uh, not in PyBuild. I think uh, I think I can uh, improve the situation in that uh, area. But in uh, in, a, in the in, uh, PyPy to PyPI to DAP uh, tool, so the the one that creates pack Debian directory from scratch, I can add uh, support for auto package tests okay. over there. But it's only for new packages. I don't really think I can do anything about it in uh, in PyBuild because it's PyBuild is used during uh, uh, build, so and uh, auto package test is uh, mostly about creating Debian uh, tests control file, I think, right? So uh, it's not a place where PyBuild should uh, do anything. For some test cases, it could share the same configuration, but. It depends on the test suite being very nice to begin with. There is a new uh, Python support, Python module in uh, auto package test. Somebody from our team created it, but uh, I'm not very familiar with it. It automates a lot of... Uh, yeah, that, that was uh, Andrej Novi. He added um, support for auto -dep H, which is a support package that creates if your package doesn't have Debian test control, it creates one.
for you based on metadata on the package. So what you want to do there is probably have a extract a tool to run tests from PyBuild and then have that in a separate binary package that you can use as a so test it's dependency. It's something you can run in a source directory and it will create a Debian control file or Debian tests control no, no. file? Or? Uh, so that part is, all, is partially done by, by Andrej. So right now it, it just does like a simple import foo to make sure that you can actually load the test. But when you when you have that other tool that run the, that actually runs the test, so it's something that uh, then auto package tests uh, we'll uses. Call. But we have to. No. Um, auto package test has a mechanism of auto tests. So a particular type of package can have a single test that works for all of them, and this essentially works for all Python modules by doing a simple import or. How can we en enable it? It's enabled already. I mean, so done. Yeah, yeah, but it just is import test. It doesn't actually run any tests. So w what we we need to do is to improve the auto generation of the auto package tests to include a call to the tool that actually runs the tests. And have a standard yes, and they have well a standard mechanism calling stuff. I don't like it um, if we introduce auto package tests without um, then doing something with it. Because um, usually, even if an auto package test fails, uh, nobody cares about it. And um, sorry to say, um, Ubuntu cares about them. And um, I'm doing the, then the, the whole QA for, for the Ruby team in Debian, uh, <laughs> or then for, for the Python team. So um, it would be nice if the release team could, well, um, honor results of auto package tests, and then it would make sense to turn them on, even in a very simple way. So is somebody from the release team here who could comment on that? No? Just just making sure it's not me that I ask, ask it for it. It's someone from the Python team that started doing it. So I know that person because he's been doing some open stack packages with me. Uh, what we do in the team is that we do run, have tests at build time, and we also run the auto package test after the package is built. So uh, that's probably one of the ways to make sure that these tests are in order. It's like you, you run them after the package is built so that you make sure it, it's okay to upload the package this way in the archive. That's something that PyBuild can do. And by the way, hello, Andres. <laughs> Behind I see. Actually, we're running now out of time, so I think we need to close the session because we have an uh, agenda session after here. So, thank you for the BUF. Thank you. And for the fruitful discussions. For